In this question, we are given a state of plane stress where sigma x is equal to 50 megapascals, sigma y is equal to 10 megapascals, and tau xy is equal to 10 megapascals. And we're being asked to estimate the angle of rotation required to have tau x prime y prime equal zero. Now, this is this exercise at this point is an estimation. It's not an exact calculation. Later on, we'll have some techniques that we can use that will more or less be able to get to these exact answers quickly using more circle. But for now, what I'm hoping that we can explain and, and perform is a numerical calculation in Python using the generalized transformation equations. So the, the generalized transformation equations are given in the slides uh, back, let's see, uh, here. If we, a little bit beyond, okay, here, here they are. So uh, we have a general equation for sigma x prime right here in terms of the sigma x, sigma y, and the tau xy along with the angle of the transformation or rotation and we also have an equation for tau x prime y prime in terms of sigma x sigma y tau xy in the angle of rotation and sigma y prime in terms of sigma x sigma y and two theta and theta and tau xy okay so what we're going to do is implement these equations in Python so that we can vary the theta to be able to see on a graph when the question is asking tau x prime y prime is equal to zero. Okay, that's, that's what we're looking for and we're estimating the angle of rotation for that. And there's a caveat here that we are looking for the value closest to zero degrees as theta plus or minus 90 degrees is also a solution. Okay, so there's going to be this interesting behavior that every 90 degrees, it can be offset by some amount, but every 90 degrees, we can get a, a, um, a, a tau x prime y prime equal to zero. So let's, uh, Let's go ahead and look at the implementation of the script in, in Python. And uh, there are some screenshots here of, of how you might do it. You can also go to the website, session 17, uh, Mechanics uh, uh, for Plane Stress 1. And if we come down here, we'll find that there is a uh, Python script. So you click on that and it should bring you right into uh, Colab. And there are a number of uh, scripts here that, that might be useful, uh, but uh, the one that we're gonna be interested in is not, it's a little farther down, but before we go down, make sure we go ahead and run this script at the beginning. And uh, then we go down, 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 and you can even see that I wrote session 17, question three. So we don't have to do a whole lot of thinking. If you have different numbers than the ones that are listed here, we can go ahead and put the state of stress in uh, the sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. And then the script is going to create graphs that scroll through theta. So we're going to see that uh, theta is going to go from uh, 0 to um, 180 uh, degrees. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and run it. And it says it's completed. All right. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We have a graph for uh, sigma x prime and we see that it oscillates this is uh, let's see if we can there we go so we can see that it 
and there's a rotation angle and it starts at about 50 that's because that would have been the starting point right and then as that angle changes it goes up and it comes back down and it goes back up okay uh, it doesn't go through zero uh, but that's not what we're being asked at this point i mean you could we could ask where it's a maximum or minimum and there will be questions like that later tau x prime y prime is what our primary interest is and maybe i will actually make this a little bit smaller just so we can see the whole graph a little more clearly okay so we started at 10 um, uh, megapascals uh, for the uh, the tau xy and so that's uh, we can see that both let's see if we go back here right, da, 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 right. tau xy nope not this one tau x y is 10 megapascals so with a rotation angle of zero right tau x y is just going to be zero and we're again looking for when it crosses through or it's equal to zero an estimate of it so we look here and it's going to go down and about here it crosses zero and so you come down if you were like to draw a line straight down you're like okay it's somewhere between 10 and 20 so somewhere between 20 and 10 10 and 20. now so you know you could start guessing numbers uh, like maybe it's uh 13 maybe it's 18. It's, it looks like it's a little bit closer to the 10 than the than the 20 and it's hard to tell here i understand but to help out i actually included the uh expressions exactly um that will uh will spit out uh some uh some calculated values all right so uh you can try different values here and it will uh, it will give them it'll give you so like maybe you thought it was 18 initially okay and so we hit control enter we run it okay and 18 says well it's minus 3.7 so then we come over here and we say, oh, maybe it's 11. And so, you know, minus, minus four, all right, and 11, it's gonna be, okay, like uh, 1.8, so that's two. So then we can go to like 12, and then we, we getting, we're getting to one, and then we can go to 13, okay? And so it's just trial and error, and we get to 0.22. And then we can go like 13.5, and that's like slightly negative, right? So you get the idea that we can kind of estimate by plugging in different numbers for rotation, because it's hard to, to pick off the exact numbers from this, this graph. We could have graphed a smaller portion as well, if we like, to, to kind of get an idea. Uh, so that's another option. So we could come over here and we say, you know, we really don't need that large a swath. Uh, we know it's going to be less than, um, we know it's going to be less than, than 20. So we put in 0 to 20 here. Okay. And so then we can also get an idea. Oh, and see, it's, it's what's tricky here is that the actual plotting is going uh, from uh, 0 to 180 so we're going to change that at least on the the um, uh, the towel graph so let's just put 20 here okay and you know we already have the answer this is just showing you a little bit more in the code how you could you can take a look at things so now we see okay we started at 10 and where do we cross zero Ooh, around here so so yeah so you know somewhere around whoops maybe around there going straight across yeah, you know, somewhere between 12 and a half and 15, right? And so we can kind of zoom in. So you can do this on the graph. Like we can say, okay, well, it's somewhere between 12 and 15. So we could put in, you know, this is really overkill, but uh, we could do 12 and we could do 15. And then we can come over here and we can do 12 and 15 for the domain, right? And, uh, uh, 
okay, we are missing some points. What's going on? Let's see, 12, 15, 12, lin space, 15. Ah, because I had to multiply by, this is in radians, mp.pi over 180 like that. Okay, so when we do that, um, then now, yes, we see and we see, okay, uh, zero is happening around 13 and 0.25 or so, okay? And we can test that number. If we like, that should be pretty close. All right, and so yeah, that's now 0 0.03 megapascals. So just this trial and error approach to being able to figure out when the tau x y um, or the tau x prime y prime becomes zero. All right, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.